Hello my friends, welcome back to some further discussion of factor analysis. In this video we're going to examine, examine some assumptions that may or may not be required for factor analysis to be valid. I do love this little saying again, torture numbers and they will confess to anything. Let's get out there and see if we can torture a few numbers. Now several assumptions are required of the data sets in order to conduct factor analysis Assumptions are very important. As a researcher, you must examine the underlying assumptions and report your findings as to whether the assumptions were met or not. This is to guide the usability of your research. Uh, the reader must be informed. And keep in mind that if you don't meet an assumption, you declare it, and therefore you leave it to the mind of the informed reader to interpret. Six assumptions are noted as follows. Now, some of these assumptions or things which must happen. Uh, one of these is something that says, well, this doesn't have to be present, so you'll have a little bit more ease with doing your factor analysis. One of the things that you cannot have is you have no outliers in the data set. You must have adequate sample side. You must have no perfect multicollinearity. And homoscindacity is not required between variables. You must have linearity of variables and interval data. Now, before you faint, I want to tell you that I just ran through these briefly, so I plan to discuss each of them. First of all, you will have no outliers present in the data set. This means that you have no extreme data. Uh, I give you the example here of the data 158 minus 4, 23, 18, and a million 247, 942. When you look at that data set, a uh, million two hundred forty-seven thousand nine hundred forty-two is so large that it just swamps everything out else. It just overwhelms the remaining data, so it would be considered an outlier. Most of our data sets will not include outliers because we may be looking at percents, things like that. A percent would range from zero to a hundred. You must have adequate sample size, and this means that you must have more variables than you have factors. You, you cannot have only three variables and have four factors. And each variable must also have more data values than you have factors. If you're looking for four factors, you need to have a substantial number of data points in each of the variables. Our data sets, of course, will be large and they will be plenteous. Uh, the data sets must possess no perfect multicollinearity. Now, collinearity means that to each variable is unique. For those of us that teach uh, math or algebra who work with lines, what this really means is linearity. These can't be the same sets. If you look at this variable set one, we have one, two, three, and four. Variable set two, we have two, four, six, eight. Variable three, we have three, six, nine, twelve. You can produce variable set two by multiplying these values by two. You can produce this set by multiplying the variables in number one by three. Actually, what you have here is multicollinearity. These are, in fact, the same data sets, just wearing a disguise. And this can occur. You, if you do that, you, this is going to be seen only as one uh, variable rather than as three. Oh, here's a big word. Homoscindacity is not required between variables. This term means that all variables have the same finite variance. In other words, another way of saying this is that you have homogeneity of variance, which means that the homogeneity of variance means that the curves are the same width. They have the same variance, the same size standard deviations. This is not required when you do factor analysis. In other words, you can have a little skinny curve and you can have a wide curve and a medium curve and you can still make the factor analysis work. Though this is, a, it is an assumption that homogeneity of variance of the variables is not required. You're, you must have linearity of variables. This is very important. Uh, each of the variables should be linear in nature. That means that, that when you plot them out, they roughly graph into a line either going up or going down. Factor analysis is a linear function of measured variables, so the variables must be linear in nature as well. And the data must be at least interval data. Nominal and ordinal data do not work well with factor analysis. You remember nominal 
are things like groupings, like, oh, we've got a grouping here, we've got males and females. Ordinal means that they're ordered, but the orders don't really, they're not equally spaced. Uh, they're, they're, they're just not, uh, they may vary from one to another. A lot of folks argue that Likert data are ordinal in nature because my rating of a five may not be equal to your rating of a five. Uh, here's a, a, just a diagram to remind you about interval data and, and to let you remember that ratio data are interval data. All, all ratio data meet the definition of interval data, but not all interval data meet the definition of ratio data. That's just a little refresher for you from one, some of our previous things that we've discovered. Your duty as a researcher is to examine each of the assumptions to determine if the assumption is or is not met and inform the consumer of the research accordingly. Uh, there are some folks out there that believe that if you have an assumption and you don't meet it, you have to go redesign your methodology and all of that. There are others that say that if you go into the study and then redesign your methodology, that that's unethical. But probably a good approach is to examine the assumptions. If an assumption is not met, declare that to the consumer, knowing that your research is going to fall into the hands of an informed consumer and then let them use it accordingly. I want to thank you again very much for your support. Uh, live long and prosper, peace and long life. I want you to enjoy this. Get into it. We're just about to launch out and do some factor analysis in SPSS, which I think that you will substantially enjoy. Have a blessed day.